Hello and welcome. My name is Waldo and I just purchased an Eaton Fuller 5-speed manual transmission to go along with the Cummins swap for this truck. So I was perusing eBay and I just happened to stumble upon this Eaton Fuller transmission and I thought the price was pretty decent, so I uh, pulled the trigger on it. It just arrived at the freight terminal and Aspen and I are on our way to go pick it up. So if you've been following the project, you'd know that I was planning on using the NV4500 5-speed manual transmission that came with the Dodge donor truck. But there were a couple issues with using the NV4500. The first problem is that the GMC gets its speed signal from the 4L80 transmission that came in it originally. Uh, the Dodge donor truck uh, actually got its speed signal from the rear axle, and there's no speed sensor in the transmission. Because it's important to me to have a fully working, uh, fairly polished build here, uh, I do want my speedometer to work. I also want my cruise control to work. It's very important to me. So uh, I would have to figure out some sort of way to get a speed signal, and that probably would be the hardest part of doing this swap. The second issue is that the GMC has its parking brake built into the transmission as well. And while the parking brake may not seem like it's that big of a deal, here in New Hampshire we do have really strict state vehicle inspections, live free or die. Because I plan on using this vehicle, I do need to be able to get an inspection sticker, therefore it's important that I have a working parking brake. When I saw that this Eaton Fuller transmission has a built-in parking brake, uh, I immediately thought, oh, that would make my life a lot easier. Um, I think this transmission also has a built-in speed sensor, which hopefully will be compatible with the GMC, although I don't know if it will be, but we'll find out. There is one downside to using this transmission though, and that is that it doesn't have an overdrive. So fifth gear has a one-to-one -one drive ratio, which means that it basically limits my top speed uh, by the maximum RPM of the engine. Uh, and the Cummins ISB is limited to, as far as I can tell, it's limited to 3,200 RPM. And at that speed, with the axle ratio that's on this truck, uh, the top speed would be 66 miles per hour, and there's no way that I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be redlining the engine to do 66 miles per hour on the highway. So probably what I'll do is I'll change the uh, axle ratio. Currently, the rear axle on the truck is a 463. Uh, it's a fairly high axle ratio for a truck like that, but I can actually change the axle ratio to go all the way down to 313, and I think that'll help a lot. It's also not a bad idea because the rear differential actually seems like it could use a rebuild. There's actually quite a bit of play uh, when I move the drive shaft. And lastly, that's also kind of convenient because I was planning on uh, installing either a limited slip differential or some kind of locker because the truck right now has an open differential. So it's fairly convenient to change the axle ratio. If I change the axle ratio to a 313, that actually theoretically limits the top speed of the truck to, I think, about 90 miles per hour. And that's certainly faster than I'll be driving with it. I successfully got the transmission home, and now I'm going to use Dyno to help unload it. All 
right, so here's the contents of the crate. Um, you see the transmission itself. Um, it's got the parking brake uh, on the back of it, and you can see right here, uh, there's what I think is a speed sensor. Um, it also comes with a clutch pressure plate and flywheel back there. Uh, right there is a new flywheel housing, and uh, it comes with a starter for that, and then the gear shift lever itself. So the bell housing on this is an SAE number no. two bell housing, which is not the same that the Cummins has on it right now. Um, but luckily, because they gave me a flywheel housing, that also matches up with this. That's also an SAE number no. two flywheel housing. And then as for the clutch and the flywheel, I'm not sure if those are the same. So this transmission won't bolt up as is, but hopefully with all the parts I have in this crate, uh, I'll be able to make something work. Apparently, this Eaton Fuller came off a Freightliner that had a 6BT 12-valve Cummins, so I hope that it'll fit on my 24-valve Cummins. Some of my regular viewers may have noticed that it's been a couple weeks since I uploaded my last video. That's because I threw my back out. I'm still not quite ready to get back into the heavy lifting, but pretty soon I'll be removing the NV4500 from the Cummins to see if I can get this Eaton Fuller to fit up. If you'd like to follow along with the project, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Thank you for watching.